but there were not thousands of Israelis killed over the summer. But there were thousands of Palestinians killed over the summer. And 500 of those were small children. I dare say a little older than the Honourable Member's okay. grandson, on which I congratulate him. But in many cases, not much older. There's an air of unreality about this debate. So far, I had thought that Parliament, in this regard, was catching up with public opinion. But the speech that we've just heard and the interventions earlier indicate, seem to indicate otherwise. The Minister is on record as saying Israel lives in a tough neighbourhood. The problem is that Israel is living on top of somebody else's neighbourhood. And the attempt to equate violence from the illegally occupied with violence from the illegal occupier is preposterous and yet repeated over and over again already in the <coughs> short debate that we've had so far. It is illegal and moral right of an occupied people to rise up against their illegal occupier. And after all, it's not that the occupation just started. The West Bank and Jerusalem has been illegally occupied for 47 years. How much longer do you expect the occupied people to wait for their rights? All this poppycock about peace talks and the rest. There are no peace talks. There is no peace process. And contrary to what the Honourable Gentleman just said, there are not two countries involved in this. There's only one country which is occupying the land of another. You would think, perhaps it is the case, that members in here have no idea how all this started in this very building almost 100 years ago when Mr. Balfour, on behalf of one people, offered to a second people the land which belonged to a third people without consulting any of the three people involved. We have a historic obligation greater than any other country to side with the victims of the act which Mr. Balfour performed. Yet there's no sign of it here. Parliament did recently take a decisive and important decision, but the government has not caught up with it. The government continues to support Israel, to license the export of arms to Israel, and to afford Israel the criminal in this picture, which in 1967 was ordered by the United Nations to withdraw from the land it had illegally occupied, yet continues to refuse to do so. We should not be trading with them at all. We should not be exporting anything to them at all or allowing the importation from them of anything at all. That's, after all, what we do with any other international lawbreaker. I have very few seconds left. They don't like to up them, Mr. Pritchard. Well, some of them do. Some of them, some of them do. The 15 seconds I have left, I can only say this. I will give way. Prime Minister Morris. Will the Honourable Gentleman uh, um, recognise that the Balfour Declaration, short though it was, did insist on a protection for non-Jews, for Palestinians, for, uh, for Christians within that um, territory? It did so insist, Mr Pritchard, but it was apparently written in invisible ink, for it has been forgotten by successive British administrations certainly ignored entirely by the state which came into being in uh, 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 decades later as a result of the Balfour Declaration. In 45 seconds, let me say this. If honourable members think that Gaza has been an erupting sore of enormous international strategic importance, and indeed it has, then they better start thinking about Jerusalem. The ethnic cleansing of Jerusalem, 
the Judaization of Jerusalem, the driving out of Christians and Muslims from Jerusalem, the closure of the Al-Aqsa Mosque for the very first time since Israel illegally got its hands on it in 1967, and the fighting which has been alluded to already, all add up to a crisis about to erupt.